I don't really know what to call this one. Chocolate peanut butter porter? Peanut butter porter with chocolate? Whatever. Let's brew it. How's it going? My name's Martin Keane and I think I've got a fun one today. So I'm gonna brew what is essentially the base of an English porter, but it's gonna have peanut butter and milk chocolate in it as well. Let's get this thing mashing. So I'm brewing a full five gallon batch today. I don't always do that, but this was just too good an opportunity to pass up not to do a full batch. Got my grains here. I'll talk about what's in here in a moment, but I am gonna be mashing this at 152 Fahrenheit or 67 Celsius. Gosh, it's been a long time since I've had the mash tun full all the way to the top like this. Oh, and already the color, looking good. Now as things stand, what's in here right now is my basic English porter recipe. It's one I've already brewed as part of my home brew challenge. There are three additional ingredients that I'm gonna be adding into this to get the peanut butter, the milk, and the chocolate. So while this is mashing, let's chat about what that is. So yeah, the base for this recipe is my English porter recipe, and that is what's in the mash right now. So this is an original gravity of around 1051 when everything is in there. Uh, base malt for this one, Maris Otter that is gonna make up 62% of my grist. I also have 10% of my grist as Crystal 45. Another 10% comes from a brown malt, 5% from chocolate malt, and 3% from Crystal 80. So that's the porter part. To get the peanut butter part, well, <laughs> I got something pretty cool for that. Now the obvious ingredient would be to put some actual peanut butter into the beer. Trouble is peanut butter is quite oily and oil and water hmm, don't really mix. Uh, there are ways that you can reduce the amount of oil in your peanut butter, which I think involves something about tipping from one container to another over a lot of time, like weeks and weeks, and it'll eventually kind of dry out. Sounded like a lot of work. So I'm using something else, PB2. This is powdered peanut butter, and I have two pounds of that. This, because it's powdered, isn't so oily, so it should mix better in with the beer. You can put this in at various points. I've seen people put it in at the mash, in the boil, even in the fermenter. I'm gonna be electing to put this into the end of my boil. Testing, testing, one, two. Now, the last ingredient that's fermentable in this beer is this, this is lactose, this is, well, milk sugar. And unlike a lot of sugars, this is not something that's gonna be consumed by the yeast, so it will still be present in the, in the finished beer. So that's gonna give a little bit of sweetness to the beer and a creamy mouthfeel, which is what I'm looking for. And the last missing piece of the puzzle, cocoa nibs. These are dried seeds from the cocoa plant and they really add, well, just a delicious chocolatey flavor to any beer. And they smell absolutely delicious. Bringing the wort to a boil now, so let's talk about what's going in the boil and when. My main bittering hop, and my only bittering hop, is EKG East Kent Golding. This will go in at 60 minutes into the boil. I'm also gonna add EKG in with 10 minutes to go as a flavor hop addition. Yeah, East Kent Golding gives you sort of lemon, herb, citrusy kind of flavors, quite subtle. That's gonna be quite a busy 10 minutes because that's also when I'm gonna be adding in my two pounds of P 
TB2 and my one pound of lactose. So I've taken a gravity reading and my original gravity, I was looking for 1052, I'm actually about 1060. Um, the reason for that I think is the PB2, I wasn't really sure how to account for that in my brewing software Beersmith, so I didn't have it affect the gravity at all in Beersmith's calculation, and I guess it has added um, a few points. And there is sugar in there, so I am expecting that to get fermented out and contribute to the alcohol of this beer. The other thing that's going to contribute to the alcohol of this beer is the yeast itself. I am using London Ale. This is White Yeast 1028. Now you may have noticed that I'm not using my usual spike brewing fermenters. They are both full with other beers. So I am now using my Firmzilla All Rounder. And something different about this All Rounder from, from when I've used it before, and that is I am modifying it to hook it up to my glycol chiller. So Kegland provides something called a temp twister that allows you to flow glycol into your firmzilla. You just have to modify the cap here to allow the input and the output and then also add in a thermal well as well. So it's just a case of drilling a couple of holes. It was pretty straightforward. <laughs> That's my camera up there. So I'll now be able to send glycol in and out of here and regulate the temperature. And I do have one more little bag of tricks as well to maintain the temperature in this Firmzilla all-rounder. And that is this insulated jacket. This is new for the Firmzilla. And this just slides over the top of the Firmzilla. I'll get the Firmzilla in place before I put this on. The last thing that I still need to add are the cocoa nibs. I'm going to add these in just as fermentation is dying down. So I'll keep an eye on that when the fermentation is about complete. I'll add those in. I'm adding four ounces of cocoa nibs in. So, brew day complete, and uh, I can't wait to give this one a try. I heard it was a milk chocolate peanut butter today. It is milk chocolate peanut butter beer. Oh. Yeah. Uh, don't worry, we'll, we'll do you a milk chocolate peanut butter drink too. Uh, I've got some milk. Uh, chocolate? Let's get you some chocolate. Ah, here we go. Chocolate sauce. Oh. Just keep going, never stop. <laughs> But where's the peanut butter? Uh, got, got you covered here too. Got a peanut butter cup. So let's put this on. Perfect. So let's take a look at the appearance first of all. Uh, your one looks, well... A little lighter. A little lighter, but yeah, this has got a nice dark color. It's not really black, it's a dark brown. Looks... This has a good head though. A good head, a yeah. good head of milk. I know, what about the smell? So I'm definitely picking up the cocoa nibs and a little bit of the peanut smell as well. What about uh, what about your milk over there? Oh, I got the same thing. I yeah. Got the, whatever he said. The cocoa beans. Yeah, the cocoa yes, beans ab absolutely. Let's give it a try. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, still going. It's still going. It's still good, folks. Yeah, what I'm getting from this is you know, do I get the milk and the chocolate? I'm getting the lactose taste. Definitely, definitely get that sort of milky mouthfeel, um, and the cocoa really coming through with chocolate. The peanut butter side of things is a little bit more subtle. Yeah. <laughs> Especially, not, it's not strong enough. Not strong enough. Needs more peanut butter, um, which I I did hear is a a thing with. 
peanut butter as it kind of gets a little bit lost in everything, despite the fact that I added so much, but there's definitely a bit of, of peanut butter in there, just not quite as strong as I was thinking it might be. But actually it's quite well balanced because you do have the peanuts, um, you do have that milky taste and you definitely have the, the chocolate as well. It's, it's really quite delicious without being sickly sweet. Well, I'm pretty pleased actually with, with how this turned out. It's a bit of a shot in the dark combining all of these ingredients together, but it's ended up being quite well balanced in that all of the three flavors I was looking for really are incorporated in there. Well, with that said, we've got to do the most important thing now, the cheers. So thank you for watching and cheers. cheers. What a pro, you took the sip as well. Some people cheers and then put the drink down. Professional at work.